Okay, so we finished masseter temporalis. خلاص, you are expert in it, you know the anatomy, you know the function, and you know what it leads to. Now let's go to the muscles that we cannot really palpate a lot, but they lead to problems. Medial pterygoid. Medial pterygoid is the muscle that inside, and I always use my friend Skull. He's my best friend, BFF. <laughs> he helps me a lot to explain to the patient. And if you are really seeing a lot of TMD patients, I encourage you to buy something like this. I bought it from Edic back in two years because it has the muscles. Not many skulls has the muscles. And poor thing, يعني, we abused him. Hatta some of the muscles are gone. <laughs> so because if I want to explain for the patient things, it's easier to see it on a skull rather than to see it on, on a picture. Even for you now, this is the masseter. And this is... Uh, medial pterygoid inside it's parallel to it but from the inside have to so so this is the medial pterygoid again origin insertion the origin of it though comes from the middle area of the sphenoid bone yeah, and inside the skull kind of on the sphenoid bone the, uh, sphenoid plate the pterygoid plate of the sphenoid bone but it doesn't matter. I don't want to mem I don't want you to memorize names. Just to imagine the image so you know the action. Uh, okay. So this is a video, I believe, yes, of explaining this area and then looking at the medial pterygoid because in order to see the medial pterygoid in our cadaver, we need to reflect the coronoid process. So this is the coronoid process with the temporalis attachment. Mm -hmm. And if I deflect the coronoid process, mm -hmm. first muscle would be medial pterygoid. Then deep to it, we have lateral pterygoid going to the condyle. That's the condyle. It's medial pterygoid. And if we move it out of the way, we can see lateral pterygoid. Yeah, you will see it better in the videos in the course, inshallah. So this is how, when it's deflected, we needed to dissection the ramus to reach, because it's in the ramus from the inside. What does it do? Another elevator muscle. So now we have three elevator muscles. That's why when we clench or when you have a bruxer, they have a lot of muscles to brux with. That's why they damage their teeth. It's a lot of muscles doing the same job. But also, it helps with protrusion, helps the lateral pterygoid with protrusion, and also lateral excursion. So it's, it has more than one function, not purely only elevator. How do we examine it? Difficult, huh? Very difficult. How can we reach? You can only barely reach here. If you palpate under, maybe barely you will reach to the insertion of it from under the border of the mandible. But that would be it, fairly and shui. We don't we don't usually test it very well. Or as I said, in that corner, you can come across some of its fiber when you are palpating inside the mouth. But we are not very specific. We don't know what we are really palpating. Now, one important thing for all our dentists who give anesthesia: Did you ever get any patient? saying I, got, I couldn't open my mouth after you gave me the nerve block? Always. Huh? You do? They feel sleepy? After the finish, I mean after a week when they come back, they say we couldn't open our mouth. No? Okay, I will be curious about your technique. I'll come back to you. They do. Let me tell you why this happened. When we inject, what, what do they teach us in dental school? That when we inject, they ask us to come from the other side and go diagonally this way, here, and then reach to our bone and retract a little and inject. صح? Is this what they taught you? Okay. Some doctors 
or before I say some doctors, this area here, our needle is very close to the attachment of the medial pterygoid. Remember, we just saw the muscle inside. So we are in the medial pterygoid. Now, the, you usually use anesthesia with epinephrine. I'm sure most of you, unless we have a medical reason. The epinephrine in the anesthesia is a myotoxic to the muscle. It causes a lot of irritation in the muscle. And it will start a trismus because the muscle will contract. That's the reason. So I learned that some doctors, as they are inserting, they are anesthetizing as well, thinking that it will make the life of the patient easier so that I inject as I am going. If you do this, you are injecting in the muscle a cytotoxic material, and you are increasing the risk of trismus. So you better not to do that. Go fully, reach the bone, and retract a little bit so that at least you are at the edge of the uh, medial pterygoid, not inside the belly of the muscle. This is a very important point. Because you know that some people, their TMD story will start from the injection. They couldn't open their mouth. And they end up in the cycle of, I couldn't. And then it becomes months and year. And the, the muscle will shorten because they are not opening. They are not stretching it. So it becomes يعني, chronically shortened because of one incident. So we really have to be careful. And I will tell you the treatment afterwards. Also, the needle itself is irritant. But we will talk about this in the next lecture. But I mean, remember your anatomy. Remember how we are here. This is very close area. So, yeah, be careful with what you do. The things that we don't see what we do. So, I mean, we're just <laughs> blindly imagining the anatomy. Okay. So the patient will come again with very limited mouth opening and usually with pain more than any other.